Hello and welcome to HashiTalk Deploy. Today we will see how to implement Automata Deployment Pipeline for your DevOps project. And moreover, how we will see how HashiCorp products or tools help to make the Automata Deployment Pipelines. So, hi, I am Neil Shia, a DevOps community guy. So, let's see the importance of Automata Deployment Pipelines. But before that, let's see the challenges faced by the manual deployments. So there are human errors. Human errors are there because of the human intervention. So there are possibility of some uh, some errors, some misprone. And that is inconsistency. So the the in the pipeline, all the things are not getting in the proper flow. And third is slow release cycles. So it takes a month and or, or more than that time for the new release, for the new update, for the new version. And but now it has changed through automatic deployment pipelines. The benefits are speed. Because nowadays recent like newer version, newer release cycles are like for a particular day. We can release in one a week or on a one single day also. It is a consistent. Next is reliability. So uh, the human intervention is reduced. So there are lesser chances of having errors. Another is collaboration because for our making automatic pipeline, everyone is needed here. From DevOps team, from platform ops team, from SRI team, from a like monitoring team, all are needed. And it will help you to, to collab them. So let's build a deployment pipeline. For that, what we will use is we will use Terraform. IAC. What are the benefits of Terraform using here? Is we can replicate the code across different environments. We can store the version of the changes. Other is Terraform is a cloud agnostic, uh, we, as we all know. So we can have multiple cloud support. We can have a database on Azure, uh, something on some other services on AWS, some other services on GCP, and we can collab that and bundle up that. So it's just a simple example of Terraform. So that's uh, it's in the written in SCL, as we all know. And it's a simple core for spinning up the AWS instance. So let's see the example where Terraform is used to make to intervene between the Azure DevOps and with the AWS S3. So you can see it's, it's a simple example of that. So we are pushing the core from GitHub the, through to Azure. And we are spinning the ins, uh, spinning the ins, ST bucket there after the intervention of Terraform. So continuous integration with Vault. Now, on the deployment pipeline, let's come to continuous integration. And there we will be using two different tools of HashiCorp, Vault, and Console. But let's see why continuous integration is important. So continuous integration is a crucial practice. DevOps because it's necessary to merge code frequently. But the what is the use of the CA is to detect the and address issues early in the development. So it won't get in the other line. It won't get in the production. So for that, Vault is helpful here. Why Vault is Vault Vault is securing secrets. Vault ensures that these secrets are secure, access a CA process wherever needed, and what such information they are storing API keys, passwords, certificates, many more credentials, and just providing the minimal to the needed in the CA. So it is securing, making another layer for security there. How console is helping in the CA portion? So for CI, we need many many we need many application, many intervention between different cloud services. So CI console will help out and will manage dynamic configurations. It will help out in networking with the other different services. So in CI, the two different products, Vault and Console, are really good, which are helping out to excel our product. Now go, let's go to continuous deployment with Nomad. And everyone is curious why Nomad? 
So normal automated deployment and scaling application, it provides a dynamic and efficient environment for deploying new releases seamlessly. Why is it seamlessly? If the people who had used Nomad won't switch to anything because they knew how seamless it is. Because we can dynamically schedule and orchestrate. So what does mean our orchestration is building a container and shipping it out there as such as application. So so it's called like as core strengths are to orchestrate the application deployments. It just allocates the resource needed on the application requirement and it optimize the infrastructure and enhance the CI CD pipeline and major C D. Other is deploying application with nowhere. So it will just allocate the same some amount of resources which are extremely needed. It will also manage the dependency. It will also scale the application as per the need. And other is it will help in deployment process reducing manual intervention and min minimizing risk of errors. And obviously as it has remove the manual intervention, the minimize the risk of errors will be less. Benefits of normal efficient resource utilization, simplified scaling, resilient deployments, obviously, as we discussed this. So when we go for doing this, there are some challenges. Because now uh, yeah, we can do this, but yeah, there are some challenges with that just so that I am just telling you to be aware that the, this could be there but yeah you can do this so for initial learning new tools it is a different thing it may take some time managing infrastructure so when using isc you need to learn this and implement it properly with configuring different cloud services cloud providers ensuring consistent tool across teams so yeah using the proper tool in every scenario is a good thing so yeah, you need to configure first like which tool you will be using there. Next is considering for scaling. Obviously, when we go for being a CACD, we will uh, obviously do it in the time future. We will always try to scale it and always try to make the efficient. So yeah, so we will design this for scalability and performance. Next is implement proper monitoring and alerting. And monitoring and alerting also important. We will cover this in the next slides but yeah why it is necessary we will cover this and regularly review and update the pipeline because in like and at, at some interval we need to update the pipeline if something has occurred if something is monitored something has get allowed or something so yeah we need to regularly update and regularly have the feedback from the for, for the pipeline from some expert also we can also do that yeah monitoring and logging so why monitoring? They provide insights of health, performance, behavior, both application also and the infrastructure on which we have hosted them or which where we have put there, deployed there. So yeah, major tools and open source tools for monitoring are uh, Promises, Grafana. Also, there are many, many, many tools, ELK, STAG, there are many tools. But pretty majorly people use this for monitoring. So let's take example scenario where uh, we are monitoring an e-commerce application. So what will be manually? Uh, we are monitoring with Prometheus or Grafana, let's say anything. Let's say anyone. So what will we monitor is from the infrastructure point of view, we will monitor usage, memory consumption, this IO, network traffic, and uh, in the application matrix, we will, what will we use? We will see response time, error rates, throughput, and anything. So, how? It, it, it are also helping HashiCorp tools. So, when we configure Prometheus, we can configure, monitor the nomad job status, ensuring the application, application is running properly. From Grafana also, similarly, we can visualize well vault matrix, providing insight to secret management, yeah so yeah we can obviously collect data connect with these tools and monitor the thing next is in this automated deployment pipeline next is security considerations 
obviously when we are making this there are chances of errors or there are chances of data breakage security breakage so security consideration is also a point where we need to focus so first week of all plays a central role in securing sensitive information it uh, provides features like dynamic secrets encryption identity integration so let's take an example imagine an organization deploying a microservice architecture so hashiko may be using dynamic secret for that short layer because dynamic secret are short layer it will change so it will provide a layer of security over there and that is encryption providing the sensitive data there only and that is identity integration so it will see the uh, person who is accessing the resource is the proper one is having a proper access i will suggest some security best practices to regularly rotate secrets we can use the way we can do this through the secret engine token engine other is implement least privilege access we should always provide the limited amount of access to the person needed next is monitor and audit vault usages uh, obviously when we are monitoring the gc pipeline also we need to monitor vault usage because so if the vault will be down we don't know then what will there, what will there? the security layer will be down and there are chances of data leakage data breakage security breakage so let's take a simple example where all the hashicorp tools are used let's let's start from right uh, we will start writing code that tells back and provision deploy monitor so we all are using this we have mostly used hashicorp most of the most of the hashicorp tools like vagrant packer terraform nomad console vault so all the tools are helping out somewhere but majorly i will see nomad console vault terraform are majorly helpful to make the automated deployment pipelines so deploy faster fail less innovate and more if you have any questions you can definitely connect with me and figuring out like how to implement the deployment pipeline automate is continuous integration and is deployment and monitoring security and then you can build deployed in an automatic way thank you